Hi and welcome to the second part of the Maya projection and animation tutorial. After Photoshop let's start with Maya and modeling the geometry for the projection. So first let's start with creating a new camera. Go to create camera and create a new camera from there. Let's uh, rename it to projection and let's create an image plane from the background from Photoshop. Also let's change the depth of the image plane to 1000 and also that of the camera to 1500. Also it's important to change the focal length to 28.5. That is the focal length uh, of the photo. So when I took the photo, the focal length of the photo was 5 millimeters, but I had to convert it to 35 uh, corresponding so it could uh, be used in Maya. So 5mm uh, uh, corresponding to 35 is 28.5. That could be found when uh, dividing the diagonal of a 35 uh, full frame camera with that of uh, the image, uh, with the diagonal of uh, the size of your image sensor on your camera. So now I rotated the camera to fit to the perspective of the photo and started uh, placing some um, meshes and starting modeling the scene. So I'm just placing some uh, meshes for the road and for the forest to the right. So I'm going to start with the road first. So most of the times here uh, I use uh, the insert edge loop tool and then I move the points uh, around just to fit to the layers we did in Photoshop. So I'm now I'm using the edge loop tool and moving the points around just to fit the image. I'm turning on Photoshop just to see the reference of the road, to see how much I need to extend the model of the road. Now I'm just continuing refining the model. Now I'm going to take the mesh for the right uh, forest and just snap um, the points to the end of the road mesh. I'm going to insert some edge loop loops and also match uh, the end points to the mesh of the road to their corresponding points. I'm just moving the end points just to fit the trees and I'm inserting one more edge loop for the pile of snow uh, besides the road. So matching the camera uh, inside of my uh, to your real world camera that you took the photo with is really important. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the details of how to get your uh, millimeters right. Uh, if you're using a 35 full frame uh, camera, digital camera, um, you only need to take the actual size that uh, that's written in your properties of the image file. But if, if you're using a smaller camera um, or that has a smaller image sensor. So to convert it you need to know uh, the crop factor of your camera. That's by how much the image sensor is smaller than the 35 full frame digital sensor. And you can uh, understand and find the crop factor uh, as I said by dividing the diagonal of uh, 35 millimeters uh, image sensor to the sensor of your camera. So the diagonal of the 35 millimeter camera is 43.3 uh, millimeters and now all you need is to find the diagonal of your uh, camera sensor. So uh, most of times you can find those in your camera specifications or on the many websites that list the, those specifications. And when you found the crop factor, you just uh, need to divide it by 35 and you receive your correct millimeter measurement you, that you can put inside of Maya. Now I'm just finishing the geometry for the left pile of snow on the road. And also I've created the geometry 
for the left forest. So now I'm just matching the endpoints for that and adding some loops and matching the points of those loops to the road. I'm just matching the continue to match the geometry uh, to the photo. The geometry doesn't need to be an exact match uh, to the photo, but generally it's good to encompass all the of the parts that uh, are vital for this uh, layer. So now, when I try to match to the uh, the model to the left side of the forest, um, I could leave uh, a little bit more room on the top and on the far. Uh, right side of the forest just to be sure that uh, I will cover all the tips and branches when I project the image onto the geometry continuing to match the points and moving them around just to fit a little better Moving them up just to have all the forest inside the model. And now let's um, start creating the model for the background mountain and forest. So just creating a plane again. And uh, this time I'm going to move it further back to match the distance between the uh, foreground and the middle ground to the background and just scaling, t uh, scaling it up and rotating it to match the photo again inserting uh, some more loops and again matching the points of those uh, loops and the mesh to the photo so I'm continuing to move the points around and that seems fine so now I'm going to make the background for the sky the model for the sky so it's going to be even further back from the uh, the background itself the background mountain and forest also again I need to adjust the camera inside of Maya and I need to make the aperture square because the image itself is square so I'm going to make it uh, 0.9045 for both so before continuing to export the photos from Photoshop, I need to make some adjustments because, uh, as I said, you need to probably several times to come back to Photoshop and just uh, some of the layers to fit better. It's always that way. So I'm just uh, adding a little bit extra to the mask of the left and right forests, just to encompass all of the models. And I'm going to save each layer to a separate uh, Targa image. So I'm, I'm also taking the mask and uh, pasting to its own layer so I can save it as its own image. 